So last week, um, or last time, we talked a lot about fish growth. And we looked at growth in length and growth in weight and growth over the fish's uh, age. And we're going to um, build upon that. Now, one of the reasons that we spend so much time talking about fish growth, uh, Dr. Heidinger always told me this. Dr. Heidinger said oh, that if you really want to understand fish, you got to understand how they grow because you know we, we talked about how growth is one of the important dynamic rate functions defining a population size affects everything in a fish right the bigger fish um, have more potential prey they're less vulnerable to predators bigger females can have uh, more babies um, of course is from an angler standpoint bigger is always better so um, that's why we talk so much about fish growth now we're going to extend that and today we're going to talk about fish condition okay so condition is kind of what it sounds like you know what condition is the fish in condition can kind of be thought of as the fish's health really when we're talking about fish condition we're talking about its plumpness okay so we know that that fish grow in length but for a given length there's a wide range in weights that you're going to find in fish. Fish tend to grow in length first and then they put on weight. So you have two fish that are the same length. Say I've got a 150 millimeter crappie out of Spring Lake and a 150 millimeter crappie out of Wren Lake. They're the same length, but I promise you that that Wren Lake crappie is much more plump. It's much fatter. Well, um, there's a lot of reasons for that. The number one reason is forage base. If you've got enough forage, then you can fill out and get fat. Um, but also health, uh, water quality, these are the kind of things that affect fish condition. At any rate, um, we're often interested in measuring the condition of a fish and looking for trends in condition because that tells us a lot about what's going on in our fish community. So there have been a number of ways people have looked at fish condition. Um, they all relate the length to the weight which is why one of the last things we did um, and one of the things you did on your homework was look at the length weight regression for a population of fish. The first um, is called Fulton's K and that's been widely used and um, it's basically taking the length weight regression, rearranging it, um, and, and then substituting just a few variables. So instead of A, you use K, but it means the same thing. At any rate, basically it just rearranges that length weight regression. And so then if you have a bunch of fish and you have the length and weight on those fish, so you take a particular fish, you plug its length into the equation for Fulton's K, and it will spit out a number. And the higher that number, the better the condition. And so that way you can take two fish that are the same length, um, and I'm sorry, you plug in, for Fultons, you plug in both their length and their weight. That's, I, that's an important point for Fultons, I should have mentioned. So you plug in the length and weight, and it spits out a number. And the better the condition, the more plump the fish, the higher that value. And so a lot of people use this. Um, you'll see in a lot of earlier literature that it's used all, uh, all over the place. And it, it works in that more plump fish have higher condition have higher Fulton's K and so you can um, use it in that way but there's a few drawbacks to Fulton's K and that's why um, it's not used as much anymore first off you can't compare among species um, so if I get a K of 1.5 in a largemouth and a K of 1.5 in a bluegill that doesn't mean that those two fish are kind of the same condition. Okay, it just means that that they're just have the same Fulton's K. Um, you could only use Fulton's K within a species, and that limits its availability or, or, or utility. Another uh, problem with Fulton's K is that it has a length bias to it, um, and so no matter what you're always going to see Fulton's K trend up in longer fish. Even if they don't have better condition, Fulton's K will suggest that they have better condition. And that has to do with the fact that Fulton's K assumes isometric growth. You remember the isometric growth 
uh, when we talked about the relative weight equation. Um, but most fish don't grow isometrically. Most fish grow um, allometrically, and, and so that's why Fulton's K um, isn't quite the best.